A few weeks ago, I released a YouTube short showing off one of my favorite 3D printer mods, the Clicky Probe. I mentioned wanting to upgrade my Ender 3 V2 with the Kevin aka Sam Clack Ender variant of the mod and asked if there was interest in a step-by-step -step guide. The answer was overwhelmingly yes. Well, the Ender has officially been converted and is up and running beautifully with the new probe and I recorded as much of the process as I could. So in today's video, we will cover what the Clicky Probe is, why it is awesome, and we will go through the process of getting the Clack Ender installed on this Ender 3 V2. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. For those not familiar, let's quickly touch on the what. The Clicky Probe is an automatic bed leveling probe that uses a micro switch and magnets to dock and attach the probe. It's precise, repeatable, inexpensive, and can be adapted to just about any printer. On top of that, it is a ton of fun to watch as it does its thing, and as a bonus, it also doesn't require any soldering. Although it can work with a variety of firmwares, it's most commonly used with Clipper because Clipper has the ability to use macros, which will enhance its functionality. RepRap firmware does as well, I just don't have nearly as much, really any real experience using RepRap firmware. There can be a bit of tinkering when initially getting this installed to get all of the different values set correctly, and not having to recompile the firmware each time you change one value is also a huge plus. That brings us to the Clack Ender. The Clack Ender is an implementation of the Clicky Probe for the Ender 3 or similar Creality type printers. It uses the same Clicky Probe setup with the micro switch and the magnets, but it has been adapted to work specifically with this printer or again, this style of printer. Because on i3 printers, you typically can't get the tool head completely off of the build plate, most of the time you're going to be losing build volume with the clicky or you're going to need something like a servo, which is what I use on my Voron switch wire. With the Clack Ender, a very simple and clever implementation of the dock and a retaining clip allow you to not lose any build volume and you also don't have to install a servo. This Ender 3v2 has been converted to the Micro Swiss NG. It's already got the Kevin aka Sam uh, belted Z mod that we installed a little while back and it is currently running Clipper firmware. There will only be some minor differences with mine because I'm using the NG extruder as long as you are using the stock Creality backplate that came on the Ender 3 or again the machines that are like that, the differences will be very minor and I'll do my best to point them out. If you are running a custom tool head of sorts, you'll want to check on the Kevin aka Sam website. There is a compatibility section where it'll basically have you take some measurements from the nozzle touching the bed, how far is the gap to the bottom of the X extrusion, and the tabs on the back of the X plate that uh, the belt loop around, you'll want to measure the width and the thickness of that, again, if you're running a custom tool head. Firmware-wise, we are going to be using Clipper because it is my preferred firmware and the one that I have previous experience installing and setting up the Clicky probes. If you're wanting to install this on your machine running Marlin, the physical install will be the exact same, and the GitHub repository has some awesome details that cover the required firmware changes. All Clicky probes I've set up are based on the same main parts which are the Omron D2F or D2FL micro switch, six by three millimeter magnets, a few screws and some wire. The Clack Ender has a very nice bomb, including the needed screws, so you can make sure you have all the hardware needed. You will also need to print out a few parts. Every Clicky probe will have at least three parts, which is the dock, the probe block containing the switch and the probe mount. The Clack Ender has one extra part called the probe retainer. As far as printing goes, I've always printed out the clicky parts in ABS. If you're not comfortable or don't have the ability to print in ABS, then I would at least go with PETG to have some more heat deflection than what you'll get with something like PLA. The Clack Ender does have a tolerance test that you'll want to print out before printing out any of the rest of the parts. This is basically just a vertical and horizontal magnet check to make sure that the with the shrinkage of your printer and your tolerances, that you're able to get those magnets in without breaking the part. And it will also let you know if you need to print out any of the scaled up versions of the parts that are available also in the GitHub. For the NG, I did have to make some slight modifications specifically to the dock as well as the mount. The good news is that the CAD for the Clack Ender is all available and there is a parametric Fusion 360 file so you can download that and adjust things to your liking. 
I did go ahead and upload my remixed files for the NG extruder over to Printable. So if you are running the NG toolhead, then you can just go ahead and download those. Now that you've got all of your parts printed out, we are ready to get into the assembly. Starting with the probe block. Depending on which version of the micro switch you sourced, you may need to remove the lever. To avoid damaging the switch, use tweezers to squeeze the legs and make the removal process easier. For the clicky probe, we only need to use the outermost legs of the switch, which are NC for normally closed and signal. Just use some flush cutters to snip off the center leg. The two holes that the legs of the switch need to go through are covered with a bit of filament that will need to be cleared out. I recommend just grabbing a small drill bit and using that to clear out those two pockets. Now we can insert the switch into the printed part, but you'll need to mind the orientation. With the angry eyes facing towards you, the switch needs to be on the left side. Then use two M2 by 10 millimeter self-tapping screws through the eyes to secure the switch in place. You want the switch snug, but be careful not to damage the switch or the printed part. Now it's time to insert the magnets. If you did the tolerance test correctly, you technically don't need to use any super glue because it should be a very tight fit. However, I've had enough bad experiences trying to just pressure fit magnets into printed parts that whenever I'm doing a clicky probe setup, I always add just a tiny bit of super glue to the magnet to just help reinforce that it is not going to come out of those pockets. If you do end up using super glue, I would highly recommend wearing gloves. We did that a while back on stream and the super glue got all over my hand, which wasn't fun. For the two magnets that are going to be going in where the micro switch legs are, insert one of them into either of the pockets, the direction doesn't matter, and then use a hard surface to press down and secure the magnet into place. For the second magnet, you'll want to attach it to that first magnet and then flip it 180 degrees so it's facing the opposite direction, and then do the exact same thing, inserting it into the second pocket. It's fine if the magnets are sticking up a little bit above the surface of the printed part. The key thing is that you want them flat, which is why we are using a hard surface to press them in and make sure that they are exactly uh, aligned with each other. If the magnets are not perfectly flat, in the past I have used a little bit of sandpaper to sand off an edge if needed, and that's something that you can always do. You'll also need to insert a third magnet into the side of the block. At this point, the direction for that one does not matter. Moving on to the probe mount, we will need two long wires. These will be ran through the existing wiring hardware to connect the micro switch to your board. Use wire strippers to remove a fair bit of the cover from the ends of the wire. You'll then push the wire through the wire channel into the pocket for the magnets and fold it over the edge of the printed part. Depending on the gauge of wire that you're using, I found it easiest to twist the wire before attempting to slide it through the channel. The reason why we're folding it over the end of the printed part is to help with keeping it from popping out while we're trying to get the magnet in that same pocket. Next, you'll need to place magnets on top of the probe block, and that is the direction that you'll need to insert them into the probe mount. Because these two are going to be attaching with each other, you need to make sure that you're not inserting them incorrectly. It is really important. The angry eyes should be facing towards you and the curved portion of the mount should be facing towards the left. Just like with the Pro Block, use a hard flat surface to push those into place and just be careful when you're pushing down on that mount and use the edges that is going to be the strongest part. Once installed, use flush cutters to remove the wire that is folded over the side. There's a small pocket on the printed part for a zip tie that you can feed through that will attach those wires and help keep them in place and also help to keep a bit of strain off of the ends of the wire. Looking at the printer from the back, remove the left belt and slide the probe mount onto the belt tabs. The curved portion of the mount should be facing towards the roller wheel. You'll want to make sure that you push it all the way to the back of the tab. Then use an M3 by 10 millimeter screw in the hole above the zip tie to secure the probe mount to the tab. You'll want this snug to prevent the mount from being able to slide around, but also be careful the walls where that screw is going into are quite thin. As for the wires, for now feed them through your existing wire harness all the way to the controller and we'll get those installed shortly. Moving on to the dock, we'll need to insert one more magnet. Make sure you insert the magnet into the correct pocket. The one with the smaller hole is where a magnet will go and the one with the larger hole is where we're going to be feeding an M3 screw. For this one, take the probe block and place a magnet onto that side magnet. That is the direction that you want it to go into the probe dock so that way the probe block can attach to that magnet. In the other pocket, you'll need to install an M3 screw. The guide calls for anything between 12 to 16 millimeters. The purpose of this screw is to give the probe block a perch to sit on while it's attached to that magnet. If you're using the NG extruder, I did have to modify the screw pocket to bring it a little bit closer to the Z-axis extrusion. To install the dock, remove the nut or bolt, depending on whether you have the belted Z installed, 
from the bottom of the right x-axis wheel. Press the plates together with one hand to keep the roller wheel and the spacers from falling out. Then slide the dock into the extrusion and secure it in place by reinstalling the removed nut or bolt. Lastly, we have the probe retainer that will help to remove the probe block from the probe mount. Insert two M5 by eight millimeter screws through the two holes and install M5 T-nuts at the ends. We will be installing this into the left channel on the front of the right Z-axis extrusion. Height-wise, we want the top of the left wall to be just slightly above our bed surface. The screw holes are also slotted so that you can slide it left or right. With our probe block attached to the dock, we can lower the x-axis until the block is within the retainer. You'll want a couple millimeter gap between the retainer wall and the block. As for our two limit switch wires, unless you're planning on running the Clipper Z automatic calibration plugin, it makes the most sense to replace your existing Z limit switch with the Clicky Probe. On my printer, I unplugged the Z-min wire from the board and removed the Z end stop mount from the printer. I then crimped a two pin JST connector to my Clicky Probe and installed it into the Z-min port. Before we touch the firmware, I highly recommend doing a dry run. I didn't do that after I got finished installing everything. I just changed the firmware, hit go, and <laughs> I ended up snapping my retaining clip because the uh, probe block wasn't attaching correctly to the dock and it came in at an angle. So as far as dry run, all that I mean is take your tool head, move it over to the probe block. It should attach. If it's attached, great, that's step one. Step two, Bring it back over, make sure that it's, it can basically touch the magnet that's in the dock as well as that screw, it should slide into a slot. Lower your Z, make sure that your probe block clears the retaining clip. I can see it's clearing perfectly. Right when it gets below it, pull your tool head away and it should then release the block, attach it to the dock and you are good to go. So I highly recommend doing that before you touch anything else. It's just better to be safe than sorry. Learn from my mistake. For the firmware, Kevin aka Sam has made this incredibly easy and most of what you'll be doing is simply copy pasting and maybe changing some slight values depending on your tool head or if you mounted something slightly different. Instead of spelling every single thing out like I normally do, I'm going to have the text on screen for the command or whatever I'm, I'm changing and then I'll also have links in the description of course over to this GitHub repository so that way you can simply go there and copy and paste things over into your config. The main things you'll need to do is open your printer.cfg and add include clackender.cfg. Under your stepper Z, write down your current pin ID before changing the end stop pin to the probe Z virtual end stop. Then comment out position end stop zero. Under stepper Y, if you're running a stock setup, change the position min to negative eight and position end stop to negative eight. Again, some of the values I have are slightly different because of the NG extruder. Some of these you might just have to slightly tweak to make sure that you're getting your entire build volume, but I'll also show what I'm running with my NG setup. Next, we need to create a file called clackender.cfg and paste in the entire clackender config in the GitHub repository. Here you will need to define the pin for your clicky probe. To do this, just type in the pin ID that you wrote down from your previous Z end stop. For my setup, I only have one Z motor and I was getting an error, so I had to disable the Z tilt. I also had to slightly increase the horizontal move Z. Having all of the probe specific settings in its own file definitely helps keep things very organized. At this point, you can home the printer and if all goes well, run the bed mesh macro. Again, due to me running the NG, I did tweak a few settings and anything that I think is possibly going to be useful, I will have in the description below. When you're printing and you adjust your Z offset, if you afterwards go and try to save that to your firmware, you will get an error, which is because that file or that probe section is not inside of your printer.cfg. It's in the clackender.cfg file. For this, all you have to do is take your Z offset value, go over to the clackender.cfg and enter it into the Z offset section under the probe. And that's really it. You can sit back now and enjoy your new upgraded printer. It may seem like a lot of work, especially depending on what sort of mods you've done before, but it's really not that bad. And I promise you that the end result is well worth it. I am stoked to have another printer running the clicky setup. And I think that the clack ender variation of it is a really awesome implementation. Compared to something like upgrading your build surface, this is a fairly advanced mod. And I do hope that I was able to guide you to the finish line or at least give you a better understanding of 
what it is, how it works, and if it's something that you want to add to your printer. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and absolutely be sure to jump over to Kevin AK Sam's Discord. I'll have that linked in the description down below. Take a look at this, ask questions, get help, and also check out some of the other mods like the Belted Z. It is really awesome. The, the mods are just so well thought out and the documentation is also fantastic. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel, furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dana from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.